In this video, I'm going to show you how to download and install Open Daylight and the Cisco OpenFlow Manager or OFM application on a Docker container running in GNS3. So Ubuntu 1 in this topology is going to have ODL and OFM installed on it. I'll then demonstrate how you can configure Open vSwitch switches running in GNS3 to communicate with the Open Daylight controller and write flows to the switches. The OpenFlow Manager application is available on GitHub. The instructions, however, for the installation of this application are not clear, and hence I'm going to show you how to download and install the application, integrate open flow switches with the application to allow you to write flows to the switches. In this example, the open flow manager application is installed on the same Docker container as open daylight and will use the rest conf API to the controller to write flows to open V switch switches using the open flow protocol. This entire architecture is running within GNS3 I've connected the Ubuntu container to a Cisco switch, which in turn is connected to a NAT cloud to give me internet access in this topology. I've also got a second Ubuntu host, which I'll use to SSH to the controller to start the OpenFlow Manager application. Ubuntu 3 and Ubuntu 4 are connected to Open vSwitch switches, and I'll use them for testing OpenFlow rules. One of the strengths of GNS3 is the amazing community that GNS3 has. One of the community members that makes a huge contribution is Andrew Coleman. Andrew not only writes useful columns on GNS3, but is constantly helping people in the GNS3 community. So before we get started, I wanna thank Andrew for his contribution to this video. Andrew has helped me tremendously with the installation process. And when you get the chance, please thank Andrew for his contributions. It's people like Andrew that make the GNS3 community what it is. So let's get started installing Open Daylight on Ubuntu 1 and then installing the OpenFlow Manager application. So here's Ubuntu 1. I have config eth0 shows us that the Ubuntu server has this IP address. The reason why is I configured the Ubuntu server to use DHCP and it's received an IP address from the NAT cloud through the iOS V layer 2 switch. So as an example, I can ping google.com. So before you go any further, you need to ensure that you've received an IP address and have internet connectivity on the Ubuntu Docker container. Now you don't have to use a Docker container, you could use a virtual machine. So if you prefer using a virtual machine in VirtualBox or VMware Workstation, then feel free to use that. The first thing we need to do is type apt-get update. Now I've listed the commands below this video. So if you want to, you can skip this installation process and just follow the steps below this video, but I will explain some options as we go along through the video. Now in this example, the internet speed through the Cisco switch and the NAT cloud is very slow. So what I'm gonna do rather than that is bring an open V switch switch into the topology. And what I'll do is remove the link to the Ubuntu server and I'll remove the link to the NAT cloud. And what I'll do in this example is connect the Ubuntu container to the open V switch switch, and in turn connect the Cisco switch to the open V switch switch. This is not necessary, I'm just doing it to speed up the installation. I found that sometimes connections through a Cisco switch are a lot slower. So I'm gonna run it through the Docker container. So ping google.com. Pings are succeeding. 
apt get update. So I'll use that for this installation. So apt get update has completed. What I need to do now is install a bunch of software such as git, sudo, curl, ssh and others. So I'll install that software. Once again, the commands for installation are below this video. You simply need to wait for the software to download and install. And then you can continue with the next step. We're now gonna use nano to edit Etsy, SSH, SSHD config. I'm gonna use control W in this example to search for permit root. And I'm gonna change prohibit password to yes. So permit root login, we're gonna to set to yes and save the file. And then I'm gonna use the command service SSH start to start the SSH server on the Docker container. I'm gonna generate a key and select the default option by pressing enter. I'm gonna select the Java 8 repository and press enter to continue. Do an apt get update once again. Now what I'm gonna do is install Java. We'll just cancel that for the moment. Here's the command, sudo apt get install. And we're installing Java. Press enter to continue. Press Y to install the software. Type yes to accept the license terms. The software is now installed. So you simply need to wait for that installation to continue. I'll speed the video up so you don't have to wait for the download. Software is downloaded and installed. I'll clear the output. And what we can do now is edit bash. I'll go to the end of the file and add export Java home. We wanna to edit to the bash RC file. This is a shell script that bash runs whenever it is started interactively. In this example, we wanna add the Java home directory so that that's set whenever we start up a Java. So echo Java home, we can see that Java home is set. The next step is to download ODL. Now in this example, we're gonna download Lithium. This is an older release of Open Daylight. But in testing, we've had problems using newer releases of ODL. So we wanna download an older release of ODL for the Cisco OpenFlow Manager application. So make sure that you download Lithium rather than one of the newer releases of open daylight. I'll once again speed up the video at this point so that you don't have to wait for the download to complete. So the download has completed. Alice shows us the tar file. So we're going to extract the tar file. And now again, I'm going to see the IP address that was allocated by the NAT cloud. I would suggest you store that somewhere. So store the IP address in Sublime Text as an example. The reason why we need the IP address is we're gonna SSH to Ubuntu 1 from Ubuntu 2 to start the Open Daylight application. This is the new topology once again. I'm using an Open V switch switch here to improve the performance of downloading. Now before going any further, I'm gonna set the password of the root to GNS3. So password has been set. And once again, the IP address of the controller is 192.168.122.92. We're gonna do some additional configuration in preparation for the Open Flow Manager application installation. We need to install Node.js as an example. And then we're gonna use Git to clone the Open Daylight OpenFlow app from GitHub. 
So that's now been done. We need to edit this command with the IP address of our server. So this is the IP address of the server that we're currently using. So 192.168.122.92. We've added that information to the environmental module.js file, which is in the OpenFlow app directory. We then need to use npm to install Grunt. Ellis shows us that we've got a lithium open daylight distribution folder, as well as the open daylight OpenFlow app folder on the Ubuntu container. So I'll move to the open daylight directory and we'll start up open daylight. So open daylight has started. We need to install some features, including ODL rest conf all, the ODL OpenFlow plugin all, ODL layer two switch all, and some other options. So Open Daylight has now started. So on Ubuntu 2, let's see if we can ping the controller. Yes, we can. So what I'll do is SSH to the controller and log in. So I'm currently on Ubuntu 1 on the Open Daylight controller. Alice shows me the directories. In this case, I'm gonna to move to the Open Daylight OpenFlow app directory. And in here, we're gonna start Grunt. As you can see, a web server has started. So we've got both Open Daylight running as well as a web server. Now to give us a GUI to the network, in this example, I'm gonna drag a Windows PC into the topology you could use a Firefox host or another device if you wanted to. But in this example, I'll simply use a Windows PC and I'll start that PC up. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I wish you all the very best.